Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBigCrochet.com and today I want to show you how to make a plastic bag holder. This is an easy beginner project and let me show you the bottom. It has a hole right here for the bags to come out and let me just give you a real quick tutorial and how this is done. All these plastic bags that you may get in your area uh, from the grocery store, if you simply fold them up like this and stick them in one at a time and by the way, these compress, so you can get probably 40 to 50 bags easily inside this cotton holder. And you can use the handles to hang on a doorknob. Or if you don't want to hang it on a doorknob, you want to just tie it to your pantry somewhere, you can just use the tie ends to do just that. And when you need a bag to reuse it for trash or maybe doggy do or whatever you could just pull them out and they come out one at a time just like that it, this is a really really handy thing um, it took me about an hour to make so I, I'm thinking you could easily make one of these in an hour to maybe an hour and a half and they're very economical too well let me go ahead and show you how to make these well, one other thing, if you could just please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done that. And if you give me a thumbs up if you like the project. And hit that little bell if you want to receive more notifications. For this project, I'm going to be using peaches and cream. This is a 100% cotton yarn. It's a worsted weight. And I'm using a cone that is 14 ounces or 400 gram. Um, you can also use the small, smaller balls of yarn of any cotton, really. Um, and the colorway on this is called Emerald Energy, should you want to duplicate the colorway that I am showing you here. You are also going to need a size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. And I'm also recommending that you have a yarn needle for hiding loose strands and a pair of sharp scissors. It would also be very helpful if you had some kind of a measuring tape because we are going to be measuring a couple of items as we make this bag. You are also going to need one more thing. You're going to need a stitch marker of any kind. This is just a whimsical one that I happen to have on hand. If you don't have this or if you even just have like a little earring um, with, you know, that encloses, that will work. Or if you don't have any of these things, you can simply use a piece of contrasting color yarn to mark your first stitch. We begin this project with a slip knot, just like that. Now, if you are a true beginner, let me go ahead and show you another way to do this so that's a little bit easier. You can make a loop like this and then bring the long strand up through the center and pull the small tail. And there you have your slip knot. Make sure that's nice and tight. And it's called the slip knot because one of the pieces of the yarn, the long yarn, can easily slip through and that's going to feed your yarn to your hook. We're going to start off by making 20 chains. We have the yarn over the back of the hook and just simply pull through. Go ahead and make 20 of these chains. Once you have 20 chains, make sure that you keep them from twisting and go ahead and work a slip stitch, which goes like this. You stick the hook in to that first chain that we created, pull the yarn through and pull the yarn through. Now you have a circle. Okay, now this is going to be the opening for the bag. This is where the bags are going to be dispersed. When you need to use a, a bag, one of these plastic bags, just go ahead and pull them out of the bottom hole. Okay, so we're going to chain one and just working in one loop, one side of that chain, we're going to work single crochets in the first loop where we joined and in each stitch around. And the way we do this is we stick the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over the back and pull through two loops and we're going to do this all the way around and we should have 20 single crochets when we are finished so go ahead and work these all the way around your chain now after working these all the way around 
We are not going to join with a slip stitch like we normally would because we are going to work in the round without joining. And by doing so, we will make a nice piece that does not have a turning join um, in it. Okay, now we're going to be ready to start using our little stitch marker that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Okay, so what we're going to do now for this next round is we are going to crochet two single crochets in each stitch, but we're not going to join. We're just going to start in the first stitch. So I'm going to go ahead. That's our first stitch. Let me go ahead and mark it with my little stitch marker here because that way I don't have to worry about counting so much. Okay, so we're going to do two single crochets in each stitch. So go ahead and and do that, okay? Um, so when you are done with this round, if you just give a quick visual check that you have two single crochets in each stitch, you'll be good to go. However, if you wanna do a count, you should have 40 single crochets in this round. Okay, after working two single crochets in each stitch around, you should have a total of 40 single crochets. Now that's going to be the stitch count that we use all the way around for each round, but this is the good news. You're not going to have to count stitches from this point on as long as you crochet one stitch in each stitch around. And I'm going to go ahead and change to a half double crochet. Let me show you how to do that. We wrap the hook once, we insert the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, we have one, two, three loops on the hook, pull through all three loops on the hook. Let me show you, it's gonna be easier than what I just showed you. Wrap the hook, the yarn over the back of the hook, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. So I'm gonna continue these half double crochets around one time and then I will show you what I have and I will tell you a little bit more about what's going to happen from this point. Okay, I've gone all the way around. Notice that it still looks very much rounded and flat, but this is gonna start changing after this next few rounds working this half double crochet. What's gonna happen is this is gonna become a tube and it's going to start looking more like a hat. So go ahead and do several more rounds just working one half double crochet in each stitch all the way around and I'll show you what I have in af after I complete several of these rounds. Okay after going round and round for several rounds let me show you this is this is the opening and you can see that we now have a nice tube that we are forming. Um, right now this is approximately seven inches already if you fold it flat and measure from the opening to this part. I'm gonna continue doing this until the measurement from here to the end is about 12 inches. So again, we're not counting stitches. We are just sticking one stitch in each stitch and um, go ahead and do that until you have about 12 inches or um, a longer one if you want a longer bag holder or even if you want a shorter one, you can make it shorter, but I'm gonna make mine 12 inches long. Okay, this is now approximately 12 inches from this end to this end. Um, if you count the half double crochet rows, I count approximately 24. I'm not being um, real exact with you because quite honestly, it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to slip stitch to the next stitch just like this, and this is gonna to try to even up the rows for the next rounds that we are going to do. Okay, so go ahead and chain two, and make a half double crochet in that same place, and go ahead and half double crochet in the next two as well. Okay, so we have three half double crochets. Now we're gonna chain two, one, two, and we're gonna skip the next two stitches, one, two. And then we're gonna half double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. 
And then we're going to do that again. Chain 2, skip 2, and then do that again. Half double crochet, one in the next three stitches, and then chain 2. One, two. Because what we're doing now is we're making openings for the drawstrings that we're going to use to close the top of the bag. So go ahead and I'll do this again with you. Repeat. We're going to chain two, skip two, and then half double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. So go ahead and continue that all the way around the top. So after working that all the way around, we're going to join with a slip stitch, slip, stitch, to that first half double crochet. Go ahead and give it another chain two, and we're going to work one more round. We're going to work half double crochet in each of these half double crochets. And in the chain two space, we're going to work two half double crochets. Okay, we're going to work that all the way around. Um, now do be careful that this half double crochet is right over here. Make sure we do half double crochet in each of those stitches. And then a half double crochet, one for each chain. So two half double crochets in that chain space. So go ahead and let's work that all the way around. I'll do one more set with you. That first half double crochet is a little difficult to see, so make sure that we take time to, to work in that stitch and not skip it. So we have three in the half double crochets and then two half double crochets in the chain two space. We'll go ahead and work that all the way around the top. Okay, now to end this round, we're going to work a slip stitch join to that first stitch of the round. Now we're going to do something a little interesting. We're just going to give the edging a decorative look. In order to do that, we're going to work a single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, and then a double crochet worked in that same place. Skip the next stitch and then do it again. Single crochet, chain three, and then a double crochet worked in that same space. Skip the next stitch, and then in the next stitch, we'll do it again. Single crochet, chain three, and a double crochet. I'll do the next one a little bit slower. I think I was going a little too fast. Skip the next stitch, and the next stitch, we work a single crochet, a chain three, one, two, three, and then a double crochet in that same space. Okay, so go ahead and work that all the way around the top. This is actually called an eyelet trim. After working this all the way around, join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet of the round and give it a chain and a nice tug and make sure you cut a generous strand so that it will be easy to hide with our yarn needle. Let me go ahead and show that to you right now. I'm going to show you how you can hide the two loose strands and that's all we have to hide. We thread our yarn needle like so and let's go ahead and bring this down Let's actually try to hide it under the yarn that's of a similar color. So I'm going to do this on the back side, but quite honestly, it really doesn't matter, um, especially since this is only going to be used in our closet for, you know, hiding our, our unused um, refuse bags. But hey, you know, we still want it to look good. So go ahead and I'm just going to weave it into the, you know, the color that is similar. And you know, I think that that should be that should be good. So I pull that through and then I take my scissors and very carefully I cut close but not too close because you don't want to cut your stitches. 
give it a little pull back and that thread is well hidden. Now we do have one other thread to hide and this is the one where we started. I'll go ahead and get my needle. It's playing hide and seek with me in here. Okay, I found it and let's go ahead and pull that through. And this is going to be easy. Um, I'm just going to, actually I'm going to come up to the second round and then just run it underneath underneath these. There's no blue in sight. In, in that case, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and run it underneath these colors. And I think that's going to be good. I'll give it a nice, give it a nice pull. All right. And you can see that is pretty well hidden. Those stitches are very tight on that round. And go ahead and give it a little clip. I'll give a little tug. Here we go. So now our bag holder is complete, but we do need to make some strands here, some strings, and I'm just going to um, make some chains. I'm going to make some long chains, approximately. Let's go with um, let's go with 20 inches, two 20 inch chains. I'll go ahead and make those, and then I will show you how to thread them into the basket or into the bag. So for these chains, go ahead and make your slip knot and then just just loosely chain until you get a chain that is approximately 20 inches long. And once you, you don't even have to measure this, you can just kind of eyeball this, but the important thing is that when you make this chain that they are the same length. So you want to make two chains that are the exact same length. So go ahead and work on those. Okay, my first chain is now approximately 20 inches long. So I'm going to go ahead and clip a strand and just give it a tug. Just pull it and there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and make another chain the same length as this one. Okay, now I'm going to show you how we're going to weave in these 20 inch long chains that we made. Okay, so if we line up the holes, just to show you, you should have four holes on each side of the bag when you fold this flat or eight holes all the way around. Now we're going to, I'm going to use my needle and I've threaded the thread into the needle because it just makes it a little bit easier. And I'm going to go in and out the windows as the childhood song would sing, in and out, in and out. And we're going to do this all the way in and out, almost like the hamburger joint in California, in and out. One of my favorite places to go when visiting California. Okay, so we pull that through. Let me show you what we have now. So we have this on one side of the bag. Let's go ahead and flatten it like we did before so we have the four holes facing us. Now this is going to be on one side of the bag to pull on this direction. Now we're going to start another one from this side starting in this hole right here. And let's go ahead and get our other 20 inch chain threaded into our needle like so. And we're just going to follow the same direction that we did the first in and out, in and out. We're going to go all the way around the bag, in and out. See the way that goes around that end? And in and out. And this is where we stop. So we go ahead and pull, pull this side out. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the needle. I'm not going to need that any longer. Now, there is one option that you can use. You can add a little decorative bead on each end. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, let me make sure that my needle can go through the hook, and it can. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to thread both of these into my needle. Okay, 
And then after doing that, I'm just going to pull them through the bead like this. Let's see if I can get it through with that yarn. Oh, there we go. Just had to give it a little pull. Again, this is an option for finishing. So once we do that, I'm going to just tie a couple of knots. Or actually, why don't we do this? We can pull that even further. And there we go. That's actually going to be a lot stronger. Okay, so now I've pulled a bit of this together because what I want to do is I want to knot this. I want to knot part of this chain in the knot as much as possible because that's going to make for a much stronger knot at the end. There we go. And then pull it really tight. Okay. There we go. And then I am just going to, this going to, that way the, the bead can stay on just like this. And then I'm just going to trim these just a little bit. I'm just going to leave these be the way they are. I kind of like that look. And let's go ahead and do the other one. I'll do it for you one more time. Okay, now that I've threaded the other side, I'm going to go ahead and get my other bead so I can pull these through. Give it a nice tug. And a little bit of, again, so I can get a little bit of that. There we go. A little bit of that, of those turning chains to go into the knot. Let me go ahead and do that again for you. We're going to pull this through. Make sure. Let's make sure some of this comes through a little bit. Give it a nice, nice firm pull there and clip. So there's a little bit of threads remaining. And pull it tight. And now. Now we are ready to load the bag. You can pull it close like this. And let me show you how to put the bags inside. Well, I hope you enjoyed our plastic bag holder. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I've got lots of great stuff coming your way this year. God bless. Bye-bye.